Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage five of Tour of the Basque Country. Today's stage, 175 kilometers, about 115 miles in length, three categorized climbs, but it's the last two climbs you want to pay attention to. They're actually the same because they're going to do a loop after they pass the finish line with 50 kilometers to go. They're going to hit the category three with about 40, 41 kilometers to go. Then they're going to hit it a second time with about 16 kilometers to go. This category three, it's only category three, right? But it's seven and a half percent and it's 3.5 kilometers long. So it's a super stick hard climb here at the very end of this stage five, a tour of the Basque Country. If you watch yesterday's stage four, we all know about the catastrophic crash that they had, the neutralization of the stage, and that's going to change all of the chemistry going into the stage five. Remember, if you had Primoz Roglic, you had Rimko Evnipol, and you had Jonas Vinigo racing for the race leader's jersey here with, of course, Primoz wearing the yellow jersey, you know Bora Hansgro would just control the race. We come into this last category three climb with 16 kilometers left, and you would see Rimko, Primoz, Jonas Vinigo light it up. Most likely we'd see those three guys go over and quite possibly with a rider like Skilmos who's wearing the race leader's jersey to start the stage five, he's in that group of three to have four because he looks like he's had some pretty good form here at the Basque Country. In his interview, he says he's super motivated. He came here with form. There's still good quality riders left in the race, but he thinks he's got the form to win it when we get here in stage five. Now we see Sepp Kuss's interview. Sepp Kuss was talking about the crash yesterday. And I agree with Sepp Kuss. It was just an incident. It happened. It's the way it was. It was bad luck. When I break down the crash, we're going to go into that right turn. And of course, Rimko Evnipol's hitting the bump. They called it like a root, but really what they mean is a root going underneath the concrete that's lifted the concrete up. It bumped the pseudo quick step rider in front of Rimko. Rimko hit it. He adjusted his bike a little bit. We see the Trek rider go down. The rest is history. We lost a lot of big time favorites. Hopefully they all heal up and they're all good to go for later on in this 2024 season. At the moment, there's some serious fractures and some serious breaks, so we're going to have to wait a few more days to figure out exactly what the schedule of these riders will look like later, but hopefully everyone can make it to their main objective, the 24 Tour de France. Now let's get into the stage five here of the Basque Country because we got just under 60 kilometers to go when the cameras come on. It has been crazy fast, smoking unbelievably fast throughout the early parts of this stage when we weren't on camera and they've had average 59 kilometers an hour while going up big climbs before the camera actually came on proper. So you know it's just been attacks left and right. This kind of a race here on this stage, early in this stage with all these attacks, can kind of help Trek because with Skilmos wearing the race leader's yellow jersey, they, that leaves them the possibility of being able to follow moves the whole time and possibly they weren't on the front so much throughout the beginning of this stage. They're going to have to be on the front a lot though through the last 58 kilometers of this stage because once the cameras are on, we're going to see about a group of eight go up the road. Not big time threats on the general classification, but because the general classification hasn't had very big climbs throughout the early parts here of the Basque Country, it's really not until tomorrow we get into the deep climbs, Everybody that gets in the break is a bit of a threat at just around 45 seconds, minute, minute and a half different times throughout this stage. But right now, Trek is all on the front, six riders, because they lost to Fasion yesterday in the crash. So they're down to six. And they're riding it incredibly calm at the moment when I'm sitting on the Chesterfield watching this stage. We see Bernard's at the front. He's got some help from Fabio Fellini there. They're both not the super climbers on the team. So this is an ideal strategy here for Trek to employ. Run your two non-climbers. They got four guys that can climb behind. Vagioli is a climber. Skilmos, of course, is a climber. Teo Gegenhardt, he won the Giro. We know he's a climber. And of course, Bach Molema on his day can be an exceptional climber. Today, we're going to have to find out exactly where he is. So four climbers, two guys riding the front with Fabio and Bernard. Those two guys are doing a great job holding that break of eight at bay. Now, we're going to go through the finish line. We'll see the gap is still only at about 40 seconds to the group up front. Peloton's coming through all together. Trek's on the front. Perfect strategy right now. Now, we're coming up to the climb. As we're coming to the climb with about 41 kilometers to go, once it starts, we're going to see UAE Team Emirates trying to light this race up and getting things all frisky. As they're getting frisky, we're going to lose... Julian Bernard at the front for Trek, and then we're going to lose Fabio Fellini, their two non-climbers. No big deal. That was expected. We had up 40 kilometers to go. UAE team members are lighting things up, but Trek have everything under control. 
as the attacks keep coming. We'll see Santiago Butrago, and he's going to start bringing everyone back with his attack that was in that original break there, coming all the way into this climb for a hole of about 20 kilometers long on today's stage. That was the longest break that I know of up until this point right now as we see Santiago Butrago bringing everything back. We go over the climb. Things are interesting. Trek still have solid numbers. They got Skillmos up there, and of course, Teo Gegenhardt's putting on quite a ride, and Bagioli's doing a great job. Now, they come down the backside with about 25 kilometers to go. We're going to see that this is when Bach Molema gets back up to the front. He starts setting some pace, and he's got Bagioli. They're both rotating through, trying to hold the brake that went off with about uh, 30 kilometers to go that had Michael Kwiatkowski in there. Kwiatkowski from Team Inos. He had four other companions in this break. They have five guys when they're starting this climb, but the gap again is getting narrow. We see the Pelotons getting nervous back there as we're coming into about 18 kilometers to go. This is a time that if you're Trek, you could get a little bit of rest for some of your helpers. We'll see Bagioli's on the front, but we already lost Bach Molema just about the same time when the Pelotons started getting real nervous. Bagioli's trying to keep Skillmost in good position to start this climb. Right here, if I'm being picky, if I'm being picky, nobody's a knucklehead, but if I'm being picky, once things get nervous with about 18, 17 kilometers to go, and we're getting into close to the end of the last and final category three climb starting, as things get nervous, Bagioli could back off the throttle and all of the three, three total Trek guys left, they could kind of fan out and find little spots. Stay close to Skillmost in case he gets into any trouble or gets blocked in, you can bring him to the front. But right in the front at this moment, I think I'd stay Bagioli and just have him getting as much of a draft as he possibly can before the climb starts. I'm just nitpicking here, but it's a good way to save energy, and they might need to save some energy for tomorrow's stage six here at the Basque Country. Either way, the Peloton's nervous. We got the break up the road, but it doesn't have much time. And we're going to start the last and final Category 3 climb with a break of five up the road. We're going to see Remy Rojas. He's going to throw in some attacks. Michael Kwiatkowski's trying to do something in this group, but it's blowing up to pieces because when we go back and look at the Peloton, UAE Team Emirates are all excited and frisky on the front for this second time on this Category 3. We see him putting in huge efforts, and this is when we see that Bagioli is going to go out the back, and then we see the attacks from Del Toro. With Del Toro attacking with about 2.5 kilometers to go into this, into this climb that's left, he's going full gas. He's going to bridge up and bring everybody back in this original breakaway starting this Category 3 climb, and it's all compact together, but what's happening in the back of the peloton? Well, it was time for Teo Gegenhart to go to work. He's setting tempo back there as UAE team members are trying to put pressure on Skillmos. With Teo back there setting full gas, you see the peloton all strung out. He's doing magical job right here for Skillmos. Important thing to remember, though, when you see this stage, the top of the last and final climb is with about 12 kilometers to go. Then it's a descent, and then it's a hard run into the town. So you still need teammates because everybody's close on time. You still need teammates after this climb, and Skillmos is down to just one tail Gegenhart on the climb. So he's got to be careful on how he uses his energy. He's doing a fantastic job and doing exactly what he has to do at the front because UAE team members, Del Toro's going up the road, and he's got breakaway companions that were already up there, so if they can get over the top of this climb, it can put some serious pressure on Skillmost behind. With that in mind, Teo Gegenhart, like I said, has the peloton strung out. Then with 900 meters to go, Max Schockman from Bora Hansgro going to throw in a huge acceleration and bridge across up to the front group with Del Toro. When you look back there at the acceleration with about 700, 800 meters to go, you see Teo Gegenhart, he's blowing hard, pulling off hard right and dropping anchor. He cannot afford to drop anchor. As I already explained, Skillmost has to have teammates to go over the top of this climb if he wants a shot to keep the race leader's yellow jersey or it's going to turn into a tactical nightmare for Trek after the, after the top of this KOM's reach and they drop down the descent. Keep in mind, Tail Gagenhart's dropping back. We don't know if it's full anchor, but he's definitely dropping with the, with the attack there from Bora Hansgrove's Max Schockman. Schockman flies through the breakaway guys up the rope. Before he knows it, he's at the front. Then look at the back, though. Skillmos is doing a great job. He's sitting about six, seven spot back there, following through the breakaway guys there that are all getting caught. He's doing a magical job. They'll reach the top of the KOM, and it's going to be Burgos BH, Victor, that gets maximum points here as they go over the top. Skillmos is in fantastic position, sitting easily in the top six, seven spots here as they go over the top of the KOM and start the descent. The problem is, when you look going down the descent, 
you got about 20, 25 guys in the first group. You got another 10 or 12 in the second group. The third group, who's that in the third group? There's only four riders there in the third group, but one of them is Teo Gagenhart. Teo Gagenhart did not drop anchor. This is an important moment right here for Trek. We go back up to the front with just about 12 kilometers to go. As they're going down the descent, I'll call it something about 11. They're coming into a right turn. We see that Skillmost is hopping on the front. Perfect strategy. Skillmost, when he won Tour of Swiss last season, he rode it tactically very intelligent and used everybody to his advantage. When he's coming down into this right turn, this is what you want to do. You want to slow the group down. I saw him get on the radio many times coming down this descent to figure out, do I have Teo Gagenhart still back there or did he drop anchor? He did not drop anchor and that's why you see Teo Gagenhart coming into this corner and slowing things down because if he can get this front group of 25 to slow down, the 12 group behind him, rider group, will catch on and then the 4-5 rider group back there with Teo in that group, he'll get back on too. As they come out of that right, there's a left. Then we see the attack from Bahrain Victorious. That should be Santiago Butrago there coming down through the corner there as he's attacking going up the road. Skillmost has to do some more work. He'll pop on the front and he'll close that gap and try to slow it down again. At, at perfect timing right here from Skillmost. As you see him slowing the group down as he's catching Santiago Butrago up there, look at him looking over his shoulder. He knows at this moment when he's looking over his shoulder that attack, the next attack from UAE Team Emirates or Bora Hansgro or anyone that's in this group of favorites for, to win the Basque Country could be coming soon. He's always looking over his shoulder at the right, perfect right moments on this stage five for Skillmost. And this moment, it was crucial. He looks over, the next attacks come, but he's able to follow him straight up. Now we're coming into about 7.1 kilometer to go. There's going to be a little loop back up onto the valley main road here at Tour of the Basque Country. As you look at the loop, look at the very furthest back of the peloton there. Tail Gagenhart's coming back onto the group for Skillmust. He knows he can help his team leader keep the race leader's jersey here if he can get back up front. We go back up to the front, just under seven kilometers ago. A nice little hard bump right here. Brandon McNulty, the American rider who wore the race leader's yellow jersey here in 2021. He wants that jersey back. He's throwing in a huge attack here as we're coming into under six kilometers to go on this bump. As he does, look back there. Tail Gagenhart's coming up to the front on the left side of the peloton. He'll get back right at the crucial moment. Guys, I had one season here at, at the Basque Country when I was racing for Alberto Contador. We were 2008, if I remember the season right. And I was chasing for 50K back there. Caught back on, did one last pull for about two, 300 meters. Crucial pull within the last final K of that year's race and helped Alberto Contador keep the race leader's jersey. This is the same scenario for Tail Gagenhart as he gets on the front. He's doing a massive pull on the front for Skillmost. Now they're coming back up to the last and final bump here on stage five. As they're coming up the road, we look back there, it's AG2R Decathlon that's throwing in acceleration as they're coming up to the tunnel. We see Tail Gagenhart pull over hard left, now he's dropping anchor. Okay, again, again, if I'm being crucial, I know I'm picking hard right here on Tail Gagenhart. You can't drop anchor, man. You got to just stay in the group. Let them come around you and hope the draft can help. Instead, he moves hard left and drops anchor, but we don't know what the future holds in stellar here with only a few kilometers to go. As we go through the tunnel, Brandon McNulty got caught going through the tunnel. Once we come out of the tunnel, it's Kern Farmer throwing in attack. AG2R controlling it and bringing it back together. Then we're coming into about 2.5 kilometers to go. Del Toro, the Mexican rider. He hasn't started one race this season where I haven't called his name out here on the butterfly effect. He's got flying legs. He's throwing in another attack. And AG2R on the front controlling the peloton. This is helping Skillmos out massively. But we come into 1.5 kilometers to go. Max Shockman is on the front. Now we come into one kilometer to go. EF Education's on the front. Then we see another attack from Del Toro, UAE Team Emirates. Or is that Solaire? I don't know. It's too hard to tell. But UAE Team Emirates attacking. Carlos Rodriguez is going second wheel. As we see Del Toro, he'll pull over to the left. Carlos Rodriguez will get a little bit of gap as Del Toro's setting up. DSM rider sitting third. That's Oscar only. Only sitting up two. Carlos Rodriguez is getting a little bit of a gap. Now we come into the roundabouts. Two roundabouts. Both right turns with about 550 meters to go. Carlos Rodriguez has got the gap there on the peloton behind. When we look, we see Max Schockman's in the, in the front sitting second wheel. First wheel, I believe, is DSM at this moment or maybe vice versa. Just behind them, FDJ sitting 
third and fourth. We see that's Quentin Pacher and Roman Gregor back there. Then we look a little further behind him. That's Caja Royale back there or Luis Alar. Alar sitting in about eighth position, but up front, Carlos Rodriguez has got a gap going into the second roundabout right turn. He's going to exit with about 400 meters to go. Let's look at the aerial view from the top, though, as we see Oscar Onlys coming through first, Max Schockman second. And the FDJ duo back there just behind Max Schockman. As they come out of the corner, Carlos Rodriguez has got a gap that you think while sitting on the Chesterfield, it's doable if somebody hesitates. Oscar only bulls up for about 25, 50 meters tops. Then his legs blow. Then about 300 meters to go, Max Schockman throws in his acceleration. He's got both FDJ riders on his wheel with Quentin Pacher first and Roman Gregor on his wheel. We see Schockman going full gas. He's going to start to come around the DSM rider there, Oscar only as he moves in front of him going going to the left that's going to open up a little bit of wind there for Quentin Pasher but he's going to follow over the top of DSM Rider 2 now we're coming into just about 200 meters to go we see Carlos Rodriguez now looks like he's going to get wrapped up with about 200 meters as Max Schockman's trying to wrap up Carlos Rodriguez from Team Enos, we look back there. Who's throwing into the tack? It's Roman Gregor. Guys, we could back the film all the way up to, I think it was stage two when they went through that right and that left with 2.4 kilometers to go. When Roman Gregor crashed here at the Basque Country, now he's starting his kick at 200 meters to go. He's jumping out to the right. He's passing his teammate, Quinton Pasher, while in front of him, Max Schockman's passing Carlos Rodriguez with about... 150 meters to go. They're three wide. 75 meters to go. They're two wide. Max Schockman and Roman Gregor sitting there to the right of them. 25 meters to go. Oh, Lewis. Or Lewis has come into the picture a lot from Caja Royal as we're three wide. Max Schockman is sitting on the left. Centers Roman Gregor on the right side is Or Lewis. It's going to be a bike throw. Once they come to the line, they throw the bike. It's a three way, and I can't tell you who won. When the cameras focus on Roman Gregor, they're calling him the winner. But you can tell by his expression that the FDJ rider doesn't know for sure if he's won either. We'll have to go through and look at a couple other angles. When we look at the top aerial view, you can't tell who won from this stage five of Basque Country either. It'll take the side angle of the camera to show through that Roman Gregor wins today stage five for FDJ. Second on the stage, Caja Royal, that's or Lewis second. Max Schockman will get third on the stage and some time bonuses, which will move him up to second on the general classification. But Skilmos, Trek, he holds onto the race leader's jersey when it's all said and done from a magnificent team ride here, overall team ride throughout the whole stage. They were magnificent. Teo Gagenhart was on the radio many crucial times asking what the scenario was. I saw Skilmos on the radio all kinds of times trying to figure out where his teammates, if they're going to get back up to him. They did every time. So Skilmos did the minimum amount of work on the front of the peloton here to control the attacks until his teammates came back. It was a magical run here for Skilmos and all of his teammates to put together a work of art to keep the race leader's yellow jersey. But when you look at the GC, Skilmos is race leader, as I told you. Shockman second, as I said, but only at two seconds. Then we look at Ayuso. He's only at four seconds. Guys, you could go back to just about top 10, and they're within 30 seconds of each other. And you can go into the top 25, and they're about a minute within each other. So tomorrow's stage six here, the final stage of tour of the Basque Country, looks uh, like it's going to come down to time bonuses that's going to decide who wins the Basque Country because it's going to be hard for any one of these favorites on the general, classific general classification like Jai Henley, Skilmos, Ayuso, Max Schockman, the whole UAE team basically because they got tons of numbers in the top 20 here. It looks like it could come down to either a break going up the road that then will still be decided by time bonuses if those guys are super close. But everybody right now in the top five so close, you got a little gap in some time bonuses, you can win the Basque Country. Now, one more thing before we go. I covered this stage in 2021. Four of these same climbs are the same way that they ran it in 2021 when Brandon McNulty was the race leader that year and he lost it to Primoz Roglic on that stage to lose the overall classification. And Tade Pogacar got dropped on that stage too from Primoz Roglic for some tactical nightmares. But this stage 
is a great redemption stage right here for Brandon McNulty if he can get himself up the road on what was almost the same identical stage. Four climbs are the same in the early part of the race tomorrow that they were in 2021. And I covered it on the butterfly effect and beyond the coverage in big time details. So if you guys want to see those two videos, they're available, but certainly watch the, the beyond the coverage detailed one because I covered it extensively in detail. And that's much of what we're going to see in tomorrow, stage six. One last thing before I go, Mikhail Landa, who crashed in today's stage five, same thing. He's got broken bones like a lot of the other favorites who have crashed throughout here at the Basque countries. Well wishes go out there to the Basque rider for a quick recovery and hope to see you back soon. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys for the next stage six here of Tour of the Basque Country real soon.